Hi everyone, so this is going to be another video on loops. So today we're going to be talking about uh, conversions between for loops and while loops. If you're interested in finding out more, there is chapter 5 in the textbook and chapter 15 in the textbook. So chapter 5 on for and while loops and chapter 15 on arrays which are related to what we often do with for and while loops. Alright, so translating between for and while loops. So during setting up of these loops, we can use either of these uh, if we're intending to uh, iterate or go through all of the members of, uh, of an array. So going through the entire array and an array being sort of a list of numbers. Okay. So here's an example of a for loop. And what we see here is that we have uh, an array of integers called a, and it's got a um, hundred uh, members in it. And then we have a for loop right here that goes through uh, basically it, it has a counter at the very beginning. This is a, an incrementing uh, counter uh, index variable right here. i is equal to zero. So it starts at zero. And then it, every time we run through the loop, that counter will increment using i plus plus or i is equal to i plus one. And then in between is we have the, the test condition that's tested every time we go through the loop. And here we're, we're asking, is the value of i our counter less than the, the length of the uh, array variable called a. So we're going to uh, ask for the, the, the length from the array variable. So a dot length gives us the, the length of that. In this case, we have 100 units or 100 elements in it. And then every time we run through the loop, there'll be certain actions that get repeated each and every time. Now, we can do something very similar using while loops as long as we are uh, explicit about setting up the counter uh, property. Now, normally, uh, if you're going to run through a, uh, a fixed number of things, like the members of an array, and you know that that fixed number ahead of time, a for loop makes the most sense. Whereas, typically with a while loop, what you're doing is is you're you're looping until a certain um, relatively unpredictable condition could could kick in. But we can sort of mix and match the two as need be. So here's a question of, or here's an example of how to use the while loop. Uh, in the same way that we use the for loop. So we set up our array ahead of time, just like we did before. And then what we have is the setup of the counter outside of the while loop. So the counter is called i, and it's set to zero before we engage in the while loop. And then we have the while loop that starts here. There's the uh, curly brace there, and there's the curly brace there. So it says basically what's in between is what we're going to be doing, the actions, okay? And, uh, and we have the test condition right here that we saw in the for loop. So i is less than the length of the... Um, uh, the A uh, array. And then at the bottom, after we've done the sort of actions that we want to do, we increment the counter. So I plus plus or I is equal to I plus one. So basically these two things will, um, will do effectively the same thing. They'll allow you to go through the array one member at a time and perform an action each time you do so. All right. So um, uh, you could go either way and it'll work out just fine. Now, to reiterate, in both the for and while loops, the stay uh, or continuation conditions are identical. All right, so we saw that that was the, the inequality that we saw. The i is less than the length of the array. They're the same in both cases. The loop counter is initialized, that's i. It's initialized only once before we enter the, the loop. Now, it's done um, inside of the, the for loop sort of setup. But in the while loop, you have to do it before, uh, in the line before the, the while occurs, or somewhat above the, the while loop. In each iteration, the loop counter i is executed at the end of the loop body. Now, there is another type of loop that we can use called the for each loop. And this one is um, a little different. So we're going to show you in JShell right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say integer and um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create an integer array and we're going to call it my array like that. All right. And we're going to put some members in it. So we're going to say 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five members. First index is zero. Then it goes up to index is equal to four. Okay. So there's five members in here and we can see that, that that's that. Okay. My array is, is defined that way. If I go my array dot length like that, it'll tell me there are five members in the array. 
Now, a for each loop is basically a simplified for loop that um, basically the assumption is that you're going to go through all the members in the array and so you don't have to uh, do as much setup. So here's, here's how you do it. For, so the same keyword, and then we say uh, int, we can do integer and uh, i, just like we had before. So this, this integer is being used for the, the incrementing. And instead of a semicolon, we put a colon like this. And then what we do is we say, what is the array uh, that we want to be for looping through? We just say my array. Okay, then I close the parenthesis right there. And what I'm saying is I've got this counter called i, and I've got an array called my array. And these are the important things that my for loop should be going through. And, uh, and then I do um, a, um, a curly brace like that. And then inside I have my body. Now before, in the example that, that was in the, the slides, I said, you know, um, actions to be taken, taken like that. But let, let's do a, a print statement right here, okay? So we're going to do system.out.println, and we're going to print out each element in the array. Now, if you're approaching this from the normal for loop perspective, you would put my array and then you put the index value in, but you don't do that in this case. What's going on in, in, in the for each loop is that every time it goes through the my array, this counter isn't actually the counter. What it is, is the value of each element in the array one at a time as it's moving through. So it turns out this isn't actually the counter. It looked like it was going to be, but it's not. And so what we do is we say i here, okay? And so that every time we loop through the for each loop, which is what this is, i will be assigned the value from the next member of my array. Okay, I'm going to close it up there. And what you'll see is that we're going to print line five times, and the first time it'll be 10, then 20, then etc. Okay, so watch this. Ah, I forgot a <laughs> semicolon. Here we go. Right there. There we go. Okay, I forgot my semicolon. Um, beginner mistake right there. So you can see that this for each loop has an, uh, a variable called i. It's not used as a counter. It's used as the um, the place where we store individual members' values. Okay, and then and we can use it. We can manipulate it. So we have the for the regular for loop. We have the regular while loop, and then Java has this additional for each loop that it, that can take care of the kinds of tasks that we normally do when we're going through all the members of an array. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.